for the for the uh, people students interested in getting a certificate from the the epic and uh, also for students that are uh, enrolled in the in the discipline at Unica, the postgraduate discipline at Unica, PP590. So, uh, Joao, are you there? Yes, Professor, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so the word is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, I will share my screen. Just a moment, please. Uh, are you seeing my my presentation? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I I will int introduce the last lecture from this. Uh, at workshop, um, talking about uh, production restricted by CO2 emissions. Uh, the idea of this lecture is trying to show for the students how is the impact of uh, CO2 emissions inside the production uh, of hydrocarbons in 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 some examples of fields, uh, there is a lot of new research about this this uh, topic in the in the academy. Do the questions about green uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So I will try to pass for you the main ideas behind um, the impact of CO two emissions for the production. So. Again, the purpose of this lecture is present production optimization concepts, present uncertain concepts, uh, and show st um, study cases of integrated reserve and production models applications, uh, use, um, focusing production restricted and CO2 on the uncertainties. Um, we start talking about production optimization in the oil and gas industry, or now for the energy industry. Um, first uh, point we need to, to consider is the decision making from the companies. Um, because when the companies uh, make your strategic and tactical decisions, um, the energy companies need to decide a lot of things. Um, for example, uh, how develop a uh, oil and gas field to select drilling locations, um, how to take uh, initial seismic uh, um, reserve studies, uh, a lot of acquisitions in terms of equipment, uh, in terms of services or even uh, building uh, other companies. It's a lot of decisions, okay? Uh, other uh, important investments in research and development. And it is a very complex process with a heightened certainty uh, in terms of outcomes and consequences. Um, for example, suppose a, a, a a company start to uh, to explore uh, a personal field in Brazil, for example, and we have the data for one well only. You would drill it, and you have some ideas from seismic interpretation that wow, it's a it's a great opportunity. So we need to define the number of platforms. We need to decide. How is the number of wells supposing questions related to the, diffi uh, the, the difficulties to drilling this kind of wells? 
we need to verify logistics because these fields are very uh, far from the coast. So it's a, a lot of uh, strategic and tactical decisions involved. Um, what is important to take account is this decision is not made based only on optimization results, okay? But the optimization are important. We'll talk a bit about, but uh, the decision involve some techniques to evaluate alternatives because sometimes you don't you have the same alternative uh, the same optimization results and you need to take a, a decision and how i can take this kind of decision when i have the same same results um, and you need to verify um what is most, uh, most important from the company, okay? Yeah. And all of this kind of decision, of course, need to be um, uh, supported by uh, good methodologies, good workflows to connect different optimization process along of this whole process, okay? Um, that is the... Uh, how the managers of the company is thinking about. We have a lot of questions and uh, we are engine engineers, our uh, geoscientists, geoscientists needs to be um, give for the managers uh, optimizer results to take the best decisions. So, but how to connect it is very complicated, very complex, and it can influence the strategy design, okay? Um, I, I will show for you, it's a method, one kind of methodology for field development management. Uh, it is proposed for Unicamp uh, by the Professor Dane's group. But I want to show for you the lot of questions are related just in terms of uh, in terms of uh, field manage and development management, you need reserve characterization steps. We have model calibration of of these models considering um, field data. If you have, or sometimes you don't have, you have scenarios generation because. We have a lot of uncertainties in terms of the reservoir, in terms of production system, economics, but we need to take decisions considering these um, this possible scenarios, okay? We have here steps related to the, the optimization of the production strategy, number of wells, the, the, the platform capacities, um, method. So, um, when you offer field, you can select different uh, production strategies, and you need to max, you need to optimize these production strategies, and, and, uh, considering the risk of, of the, pro, uh, the the project. Uh, when you consider the uncertainties related for each part of my problem, we try to obtain a robust optimization, a robust production optimization, because I want to obtain uh, long-term decisions. That's the idea, uh, especially for the case of the engineering uh, problem we are uh, operating. Uh, if you can think, I will show a. Uh, Victor is planning how is the how long is your project in terms of a few uh, a few development and management and the final we try to give for the managers decision analysis uh, to support the decision making from the company but what I want to to bring for you there is a lot of steps to help the engineers to help the geoscientists to help the managers of the, the, the industry to take decisions about a field. Um, let's talk 
we will return about uh, the, 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 some concepts. We have this flotation system that consists of the reservoir and the entire infrastructure used to bring the oil to the surface. Okay, let's consider the whole problem. Um, the strategy of the oil uh, exploitation determines this exploitation system. It, it is included in the context of project development. And our the idea we need to uh, consider the whole exploitation strategy as a product, as something I can measure or I can uh, define, I can quantify because um, we need to answer for a lot of. Um, other uh, contributors in the industry, per se. A typical complete infrastructure uh, for uh, our field involves what? Size, location, arrangement of surface facilities, number, position, completion of wells, platform processing capacities, wells opening in shutting schedule, and so on. One of uh, each one of these uh, uh, components affect a lot of people inside the company. For example, if I define uh, the number of wells, I need to connect with the drilling engineering guy, uh, stuff to define. Okay, how how kind of drilling ship I need? How a lot of pipe I need? Um, how is my schedule to to bring on these um, L's and so And for the other components are the same idea, okay? It, is this certain iterative level between these different aspects, okay? And design of this infra infrastructure is very complex and very challenging with the high number of alternatives, okay? You can uh, suppose how many number of uh, how number of wells I can drill, how kind of platform I can use, how recovery method I can use. So the idea is I, I, I need some methods to uh, to bring this design more easy for us. Um, that's is some um, pictures behind how kind of decision need to take. Then the wells and how I drill the well, how how is your geometry, how is your way along the reservoir, what kind of um, artificial lift I use to recover the oil, how is the surface and subsurface uh, uh, facilities I will use. How is the subsea arrangement of the pipes? How kind of platform I will use? Um, in terms of storage of fluids. So there's a lot of decisions our company needs to take. Of course, um, in our case, we try to focus more in the production of the fruit. Okay? And let other decisions, for example, who will um assembling the platform is for us is not so important okay I mean, more interesting how is the forecast of the reservoir uh, how kind of um, method we, we use so the idea is focus more in terms of the reservoir and production system behavior okay that is what we talk about along this course. Um, here is, is some more details about this exploitation system. Uh, we need a full definition of the primary system, um, and it occurs only all subsystems are defined, okay? Because we need to integrate all part of my systems to, to our my subsystem to have to. to we have the idea how is my exploitation system. Uh, again, the number of decision variables is so high. OK? 
okay? And how to join this, uh, this system components is, is very complex. Um, in the companies, we have some screens, some methodologies to try to, to reduce the, 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 this amount of opportunity, uh, options. Okay, it's very common. You have some filters, for example, the market cannot bring a different kind of platforms. We have a certain kind of platform is available in the market or the kind of pipe or some different uh, aspects uh, that affects these, these variables. But these, some uh, aspects are important because some equipment has a greater economic impact than others, okay? Especially affecting recovery method and uh, affecting the physical limits of production. And if you uh, verify along this course, we emphasize, for example, the pumps, compressors, separators are this kind of equipment. The platform itself is a, is a, a, a equipment that affects uh, the, econo the, the economics of the, 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 this kind of project. But on the other hand, other um, uh, components of the infrastructure have a minimum impact. For example, the kind of the pump uh, is a rot uh, rot uh, rotary pump or uh, a screw pump. Maybe it cannot be relevant uh, if I think, for example, the well position. Okay. Maybe it's not. So how is the idea? In terms of optimization, it's important to have uh, to give to consider uh, for the optimization the, the equipment uh, that are more um, relevant for your exploitation strategy. It's a typical um, uh, structural organization of a production system. Okay. Um, what uh, what we can consider the well system and demand the number location type of wells the surface facility uh, the the capacities for uh, oil water liquid pro uh, production uh, fluid injection here I include the subsea systems because it's becoming um, uh, more use, uh, usual for uh, the exploration of some kind of uh, offshore fields. Gas compression is important to consider. It's related more for the top sites. Uh, the control system, uh, especially when I think about um, control valves installed in the wells to enhance the well management. Uh, the flow line rise system in terms of length of flow lines, number of risers, number of manifolds that are subsea equipments, um, lift systems. We can define, for example, we use gas lift or using uh, electric submissible pumps, uh, but how it's affected by the installed power capacity. And remember again, uh, the, the, you, uh, who is uh, defining the power capacity of a platform is related from the surface facilities. And the, uh, the equipment used to generate electricity, we, we just talk a, a bit about turbine, I guess, turbines. And so, but uh, it impacts my production system and injection system. Uh, it's very common now. In, in, it's very common to inject water. It's always had uh, already said uh, the idea about the water injection for improved recovering uh, on the fields. But we can consider uh, also gas injection. 
It's, it's more common in Brazil, in Brazil fields, to use the gas, alternating gas injection. And what involves to the water treatment, water source, and this, we need to optimize this, this, this uh, components here. But how is more important than others? Because sometimes you need to evaluate how is important, how I can consider not so important to do my decision. Um, if we think about the life cycle, the field life cycle, we have this kind of approach, it's very common, uh, this sequence of steps related from the discovery of the field and the evaluation of the field. It takes five and ten years, depending on the, on the, the company. And you, you spend a lot of effort trying to find how is the uh, how interesting is this this the, the field discover but if you have uh, a, a good evaluation about this field we start to the development phase and you can spend one to five years studying uh, with a lot of decisions we, uh, we are talking about to define how is the production facilities the design how is this the production strategy design uh, acting more informations from the reservoir and implement implementing this uh, project in the field it is more related from a design phase from our field um, and for um, after this period, we enter in the production step, okay? You can spend 50 to 30 years, depend on the field, depend uh, how information you have. Uh, but this is the, 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 the real oil and gas production. And the, when the, the show begins, okay? When you start to produce, to start to inject, you connect, you collect, um, data from the field to calibrate your uh, models and you start to enter in a phase for measurement of the field, okay? And the final, you enter in the amendment step when you uh, stop the production, uh, remove part of your equipment and finish the, the exploration. But what is interesting, the decisions are high in the beginning and in decreasing along the time because you are obtaining more information but your um, production strategy sometimes is is fixed for example you already has they have a platform installed you cannot do uh, much uh, changes in this platform or you define a certain number of wells and mm, try, drilling a new well is not so uh, interesting in terms of uh, unities. And, but the idea is the same, okay? If you are in the design step or in the management step, you are using some methodologies to optimize my production strategy. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, talk about the design optimization problem. Okay, uh, but it is it's not just for the design step, but this uh, is use, useful to the management step uh, also. Um, what is interesting in this design optimization problem? Um, it is a different uh, problem because um, generally we have only a, a fraction of the information needed to define the design problem. Okay. Um, 
you have a lot of uncertainty you have a lot of opportunities you have a lot of um, possibilities for your case and from the, the 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 oil industry is more complicated because in the beginning you have a lot of uncertainty in terms of the reservoir so it's a very complicated problem okay um, you need we need to make assumptions about how kind of equipment you use, how to interconnect these equipments, uh, how kind of operations we will use. You need to assume, because if you remember, maybe you have five years uh, to decide what is happening in the future. So, and the, the things could change, okay? So you need to, to take some uh, decisions. But you need to, 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 to do it, to, to try to manage, suppose what you, you do in the beginning of your project. But you need to, to include some, uh, some restrictions. And you need to try to, to avoid some, of course, some uh, impossible uh, combinations is normal, but it needs to, to be some flexible because um, sometimes, you, you, one example, uh, for example, is, is very common. Um, maybe um, nowadays the price of the, the oil barrel is, it's so high, okay? And the companies take your decisions um, based on this price. And in some periods of the, the petroleum industry, when the oil price is low, you need to discard a lot of possibilities because um, the project uh, don't pay uh, the investment. But if you have the possibility to, to have a, a, lo, a higher uh, oil price, some opportunities could be interesting in terms of especially new technologies or a high number of wells. So the idea is we need to be um, uh, not, you need to uh, open the, the possibilities for uh, not for the actual scenario, but try to verify the possibility to have better scenarios in the future and try to take these decisions. Uh, yeah, to try to, to, to optimize your problem considering this kind of situation. Um, of course, you need to define the optimization problem, it's important. Uh, this affects the number of alternatives, the, the equipment you are used, um, and generally you have some time limit to take these decisions in terms of the company, okay? I have some months to years to decide a lot of things in terms of the, the, the your uh, problem. So like the idea is you need to have to go into, to, we have a good optimization problem to uh, to work because you could uh, add a risk to make a problem solvable. Okay, for example, you have a lot of opportunities of equipment types, mm, and you try to interconnect it. This is very complicated. Okay, so sometimes you need to 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 address this problem, okay, in, the, in a more simplified uh, form. Okay, but again, remember, uh, you need to, to give the chance to look be, uh, behind, okay, the, 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 the time. Because sometimes, said, okay, now I don't have the technology, but if I have the technology in the near, uh, future, or I am inv investing in research and development, maybe I can have the technology. So
So you can include it in your optimization problem. But the idea is um, you need to define the problem, you need to select the information uh, in the most suitable form, okay, to, to try to obtain the best project upgrade. Uh, how the companies has operated it? We are talking about optimization. We have used generally a uh, mathematical optimization. We can uh, write the problem in terms of objective function. Uh, and we can state, genetically, we can state as uh, a function when I have the, the uh, a vector of design variables, for example, number of wells, um, uh, platform capacity. I will show uh, example after, but um, uh, for example, the, the kind of the artificial lifting method you can uh, consider. And these uh, design uh, variables define the exploitation strategy. Okay, what are you implement in the field? Okay, and I have the other vector, and uh, that's a set of design and operation variables okay? and that can be considered in the future. That is an interesting uh, opportunity in our case because how we don't we operate. Uh, under uncertainty, uh, it's possible to include some operational variables that can change along the future. Okay, it's not so uh, fixed in terms of uh, the exploitation strategy. Okay, I have operational variables, I have some the possibility, for example, to consider a new infield drilling and the future, and I. The idea, the maximization problem, because I want to obtain the best, uh, uh, the best result for my decision. So I consider it as a maximization problem. So find uh, the vector design variables, maximizing uh, that the function maximizing is the best. Uh, for any uh, set of vectors I'm considering. In the practice, what the, 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 the industry consider? Uh, generally, these objection functions represent economic value or a combination of values of net present value, the return of investment or an internal rate of return. Some companies consider to the the oil recovery in terms of uh, how is the how I drain my reserve. That's the idea. How I how is the amount of oil recovered? Uh, and now we are starting to consider uh, the idea of the CO two emission terms of uh, objective function. Okay, I will, uh, after we talk a bit more about. Um, for example, I, I, I told Z represents, for example, oil exploitation strategy with a target optimization com comprising number, type, location of wells or surfaces in design that affects net present value. And it is interesting because the number of wells, uh, the type of wells affects our investments from the field and affects directly the net the present value. And okay, the return of investment, internal rate, um, affects the, the forecasting of the, my, my reserve and it affects the reviews of my project. Um, that so it is interesting to, to verify that these parameters could affect not only the production but can affect uh, questions related to the, the economics of the project. 
terms of investments, in terms of the operational uh, spenders, in terms of taxes and so on. Um, and then again, um, W presents future, future decisions. You can decide to could, uh, op operate or include in the future of the field. Uh, especially for the, our cases, uh, sometimes it's interesting to consider the possibility on the future to do changes as uh, in, in, as idea from flexibility of our project. Okay, because now I don't have the idea, but along the production of the field, I have some idea from my field. Said, oh, I can get other decisions along the, the production. Um, but what is what happens for us? This kind of problem, this this set Z is high complex. Uh, just example, suppose you are thinking about the well position and you have a problem with uh, uh, dozens of wells. Okay? You have a, a, a great set of, of well position. And I want to combine this well position and well positions with, um, for example, platform capacity or well scheduling. You have a lot of combinations. It's so high complex. It's a high complex problem to optimize in a simple process. What generally you have used in the industry is a hierarchy of design decisions. Okay. We broke the problem in small problems, fixing, uh, selecting one part of the vector, for example, the part that is related to the well position, the other part we maintain fixed, optimize this step, okay, and go for the next step. So I optimize the well position, I go to the uh, platform capacity. I optimize the platform capacity. So, next step. Um, I will show, uh, I think that is nice. Uh, smartphone friend. I will show an uh, example for our case, okay? But the idea is to block the problem in certain stages. Uh, but there are some questions about this multi-level optimization. How is the best seed? The mess uh, start point to start the process. How is the, my first option to try to optimize? I consider one seed or more seed. How is the best mathematical method to optimize each stage? How is the best vector, the, the, the future, I have related to the future, that combined with the, 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 pro, the design parameters? Uh, is necessary to, to return for uh, the initial steps to, to process again. Now remember, one kind of uh, marbles affect other. So maybe sometimes you need to, to return. But it's not simple questions to, to, to answer the idea from this course is not to talk about but to bring for you the idea um, um, we need to think about this kind of optimization okay because when we talk about uh production restricted by co by co2 um some questions is related to what they can do to to enhance my recovery to, to minimize my uh, CO2 emission or to my power demand or how is how I can improve my production, maintain the, 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 the CO2 emission. But the, the great idea is we have a, a complicated problem to try to optimize. So, um, and again, what is important to have in mind, not easy answers, 
we need to have a strategy to try to address this problem. Uh, uh, you, uh, some judgment is required to decide how much detail should be included in the stages of design problem. Maybe sometimes you have a lot of combinations, but you reduce the combinations to evaluate how is, is the most important. Okay, it's the same idea from the optimization. You can, we can select some levels uh, classified by categories because it is the same idea from the, the we talk about the optimization. Some design variables that are dominant um, generally use more sophisticated and costly optimization procedures. For example, the well placement is very complicated to optimize because we have a lot of possibilities to position uh, to define the well placement. Okay, um, but you have in the other side uh, less rigorous computational procedures to address variables that are minimum impact on the oil exploitation strategy. For example, um, uh, with example is the, the shooting time of the wells. It's on defining what is the best time to shoot in a well. It's not so important, so, relevant from the your project because it generally occurs in the final of the project with high water cut the wells are producing a uh, few amount of the hydrocarbon so you maybe can consider uh, uh, simpler procedures to do it but again you need to try to you need to evaluate it on your case uh, generally, these questions um, are answered by elaborated methodologies that use engineering evaluations. Um, in the literature, we have uh, amount of methodologies uh, that trying to answer these questions from the oil, from the oil and gas optimization problems. Um, in Unicamp, we have proposed assisted process when you combine engineering evaluations and optimization techniques uh, to solve this kind of large-scale problems using multilevel approach. Uh, we have studied this topic for a long time and we verified that is the best option when you use some techniques to optimize part of my steps but you always use the engineering evaluation the engineering judgment to to help in uh, to optimize the whole problem um, and you have used this the most common using of mathematical optimization process to to optimize each part of the global uh, exploitation strategy. Generally, you use uh, discrete optimization as um, continuous optimization is mm, sometimes not apl uh, applicable from your case. Um, and we, so you don't you have used non gradient methods uh, to. And it involves stochastic optimization algorithms using genetic algorithms, Munetian annealing, particle zone optimization, arm and search algorithms, and network networks. Okay. Um, the idea is, depending on your stage, you are using some kind of these mice. Uh, so we take an example for an assisted process for design optimization of uh, our exploitation strategy. So, how is the idea? I decide in the beginning a number of wells, a well position, the limits, 
of platform for rates, and I start a process of optimize the number of flows. I use some simulations uh, inside the optimization process to define the number of flows. Uh, and when and after this process, I define the well opening schedule for these wells and focusing in the green schedule we have in the or from this project and I start the well position optimization. It's, it, this is a very time consuming part of a problem. After this and use a very sophisticated uh, opt optimizer to operate it. After this, you optimize the limits of platform flow rates, well opening schedule, you can uh, optimize here. You can define the well shutting time. We're trying to enhance uh, the final recovery of the field and you analyze the optimization results. If you verify that the results are interesting, you can stop your um, assisted process or not, you can return and again optimize this, these steps, okay? Um, it is one, uh, one methodology, that, but uh, there is other, um, other methodologies more sophisticated that included more uh, items related from the production system, but the idea is the same. Okay, you select some uh, initial um, estimate, uh, estimations about uh, the parameters of your problem, you are optimizing uh, sequentially, okay? And what it uh, affects in terms of uh, green, Greenhouse uh, gas emission decisions. Because until now, I will talk for you until a few years ago, we generally stopped here because the company said, okay, let's optimize our project. Um, and about integration, sometimes you need to integrate your model to take decisions about it. Okay? You need, for example, uh, you need to include here the well, the, the platform location. You need to include the gas, uh, the artificial lift method. Uh, you need to include um, character, geometrical characteristics of your uh, pipes. Okay, and you operate this. Uh, method, uh, this kind of methodology to optimize your project. But now you need to consider how is the effect of this, of the, the, the CO2 that are generated in, in this uh, project, how it affects my decision. And uh, let's to, to talk a bit about an energy transi uh, transition for the oil and gas um, industry. Um, so, transforming the energy system to meet the increasing energy demand of a gro growing global population while lowering global emissions, we require the broad energy mix. That is our challenge as a hum humanity now. Okay? But what it is interesting, the oil and gas industry is playing an important role in the energy transition, contributing to a net zero future in a number of ways. So, the company, the, the oil and gas companies, um, uh, has an important uh, role in this, in this scenario because what they can contribute, they can reduce greenhouse gas emissions from your installations. Helping their consumers reduce uh, their emissions is another possibility. Applying experience, skills, and knowledge to develop and scale up production of hydrogen as an uh, energy source. Carbon capture 
utilization and storage, uh, it's called a CCUS, uh, and uh, controlling methane emissions across the natural cha value chain. Uh, it, it, it's, it's interesting because it's not most uh, uh, commented in the media, but you have a, a methane emissions along your natural gas uh, and it, it is a, a, a greenhouse gas uh, emission, uh, gas form need to be controlled. Of course, it's the last, but you need to, to verify this kind of emission. And investing in re uh, renewable energy. Okay, the companies are investing too. But for us in, in this uh, workshop, I select the, the two that we can, in terms of um, integration, uh, what we can contribute, what we can, uh, uh, we can contribute now, especially for reducing, green, not only reducing greenhouse gas emission from the operations. Okay, we can, uh, uh, using the call, for example, we can uh, do some evaluations about it and help the industry to increase the efficiency, okay, the energy efficiency. We can operate in terms of flare reduction. Uh, we can help manage methane emissions and increase the uh, increase the powering. Uh, the operations with low carbon on the renewable energy sources. And for us, what is interesting, we can define how is the energy demand musical. That is uh, one thing that is interesting. And of course, it affects, uh, we will talk a bit about uh, how your operations affect the energy. Um, uh, energy efficiency and oppose, oppose the, how the energy efficiency affects our operations. That's the idea behind the production resisted by CO2. And for us, uh, from especially for the reserve engineering engineers, the carbon capture utilization storage is one of the key technologies that can enable large scale cost of um, taking uh, mitigation of CO2 with the industry across other sectors. Why? For us, especially in Brazil, when we have a, a high, a, a, a giant Brazil fields with high CO2 content, it's interesting to try to use this amount of CO2, not just for capital to reinject the CO2 to inside the reservoir, but trying to use as um, a product uh, as an insulin for uh, enhancer recover method. We, we have stu some studies how these reinjected CO2 are interesting in terms of to increase the recovery of this kind of fuel. And so for us, is these two uh, uh, items are very interesting in terms of use of integrated uh, methods to help the industry in the energy transition. Um, and this um, GAG restriction optimization, how is it being used? in the literature, especially in the research literature nowadays. Um, we um, uh, have verified studies about the, the greenhouse gas emission, uh, mainly CO2, uh, and your minimization in production strategic projects. And how is the idea? 
you try to optimize a project. So the idea is to consider maximization of a production, uh, the, the objective function at present value, for example, for um, changing uh, uh, pro uh, production strategy parameters, for example, number of files, web presentation, platform capacity, including uh, uh, the CO2 emission, the, the rate of CO2 emission, like a cost. Uh, outside Brazil, because in Brazil we don't have uh, uh, government uh, regulation about it, but for example in Norway you, uh, and the other countries on the Europe, you have some costs for a CO2 emission, and you need to include it in your uh, net present value calculations to have to have the numbers, and then is to consider. CO2 generated by the, each project strategy and you need to, to try to maximize these, the, the net present value considering this. It's like a penalty from the, 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 the objection function. Okay? Uh, one other possibility is use a multi-objective optim optimization. When you optimize, uh, considering a, minimis, a maximization, a maximization of net present value and minimization of CO2 emission, it's so one technique to to try to obtain uh, uh, decision. Uh, how is the best decision in terms of net present value and CO2 together? Okay. Um, there are some students uh, using capture, uh, capture and utilization, uh, mainly for uh, enhanced oil recovery, improve uh, uh, oil recovery and storage. We have some students uh, comparing if uh, separated, considering this into separated. Uh, and rejection, how is it, it is interesting for, for, um, uh, for the, the economical result of the, the field. Um, once uh, other students, uh, as in the uh, fraud, uh, shoulders, uh, focus increasing the top side efficiency and, co and the studies related to cogeneration trying to enhance the efficiency of the uh, and, and, uh, energy cogeneration uh, focusing the top side and have other studies evaluating uh, power operations with uh, renewable energy sources especially in farms offshore um, to um, minimize the co2 emission in the platforms. So this, the main studies I, I have uh, observed in the, in the, the literature, but you, we need some tools to evaluate it. How to obtain? Okay, well, I have the, the, the optimized. I have the I calc to calculate the CO two. We evaluate it, but we need to to handle the whole behavior of the, the exploitation system. So, uh, that's the idea to use the numerical integration. We, we talked it, uh, yesterday. Again, because we want to quantify the impacts now of dynamic cooking between reservoirs, production systems, including topside, and CO2 emissions. And what is important for us? Pressure rate and energy interaction between surface and subsurface. Um, again, appropriate treatment of the mixture of different fluids and how it changes in terms of the emissions. Uh, operational restrictions from the production units. And now I started to include here 
the idea of some governmental restriction for a situation i don't know but maybe in the next years we need to have some limit to co2 emission and in it we get questions related to bottlenecks and back, uh, back pressure in the system and again the idea is to evaluate questions related to well position uh, adequacy of the surface and subsea sub production systems optimize the total production economic return of the project but minimizing greenhouse gas emissions and that's the idea i need a more sort of completed tool or, or set of tools to, to have this kind of uh, evaluation um so i will show some case studies now are you trying to some cases involving integration, involving CO2 emission, involving uncertainty, uh, to try to, to, to show for you how, how this, how one part affects the other, okay? I think that is uh, interesting, I study. Uh, let's consider Let's consider a pressile field A, okay? Uh, I don't, uh, don't have a lot of details about this field, but consider this kind of field. Um, and I have this kind of scenario, okay? I have a top side in the very, very high uh, sea level, two kilometers. Um, and I have a uh, press of reserve that is a very high uh, depth from this kind of reserve. And I have a set of well producers. And I have a, a, a certain set of, certain number of uh, water injectors. In this case, I don't have, I am considering. Uh, Hello, Moto. Sorry. And I need to consider just um, water injection, okay? I'm not cons uh, consider uh, just um, uh, the, uh, a secondary uh, recovery method, okay? And how is the idea? I want to calculate. Uh, it's the, it's the first case. I want to calculate some aspects related to the platform uh, demands. Okay, because it's a first step to, to consider uh, questions related to energy demand and so on. Uh, from this study, I consider numerical integration using an explicit model I told for you. I am considering different models. I am integrated. I could consider an explicit, okay, but let's consider explicit using the Excel. I'm uh, using uh, Visual Basic for applications routines. I define a reservoir model as a zero dimensional model and ARPS model for biphasic flow, I will show the equations. The production line model, I consider bags and brew equation. Uh, the well model, I assume linear production index, sorry, uh, linear productivity index. And the, the, I consider a thermodynamic model by Ben uh, Ben Robson, calculate the properties to the reservoir and uh, the bags and brew equations, okay? And I did some primary processing analysis using HICES, okay? To, to consider questions related to the stop site. The reservoir and the well, I consider a zero model, zero dimensional model. So I just using compressibility of the system 
to calculate how is the the the, the pressure of the the reserve, the average pressure of the reservoir is related from the initial volume of the reservoir. I apply uh, the rates I am producing and I am injecting. I calculate the coefficients of uh, the, the compressibility, effect, the effective compressibility of the system that consider the compressibilities of the fluid, the rock, the water. Uh, and to calculate the, the water and oil ratio, I need, I consider the ARPS model. It is a, a equation. In your case, I'm mean using the exp exponential version of this equation that considers the amount of oil I'm producing as a recovery factor and some exponential, uh, some, pot, uh, some terms that multiply the number, the, the cons uh, consider the relation between uh, one, the amount of water I am producing in terms of amount of what, the, the, the sorry, you consider the rate of the water in terms of rate of the oil, but related from the net present, no, sorry, the cumulative oil production. Okay, is a simple reservoir, um, a simple reservoir. Uh, uh, representation, but for our study is is enough to do the evaluations. Okay, and here I included the the linear um, productivity index from the well. I consider um, the same for each well. Uh, an interesting evaluation because we compare the rates of water and oil considering a um, this simplified model with a reserve simulate a simulation model. Okay? And we could obtain similar results. Okay, it's just for validate your model. But I think that is it's enough for our study. Okay. We have uh, a, a very good um, values in terms of um, uh, oil and water rates, okay? But it is, is, is a question uh, when we are thinking about integration, because from this kind of study, this different is acceptable. But depending on our case, this kind of difference is not acceptable, okay? You need to implement something more, um, something more sophisticated to for example, to include um, a reserve simulator to, to obtain um, best uh, or cast for a case. Okay. But for us, I think that is enough. We define the production line as um, a well that are connected from the reservoir. Bottom hole at, until the extreme, going to the uh, ariser and flowing to the surface. Okay, I use a permanent simulation based on the non isothermal, isothermal banks and brew model with mass transfer between the producing liquid and gas phase. Okay, I consider this primary processing plant when I have four. Stage to to to, to separate the oil, gas, and water, okay? and we we'll try to evaluate this kind of problem. And what happens because we can change the pressures of each separator, and we can evaluate how is impact for my my study. 
um, the, the this is the the, the overage production plan. I have the, the four separators. Uh, I have here um, uh, four steps of compression. Okay. In our case, I, I just uh, uh, for our case I just uh, adopted three stages. One stage after the second separation stage and could be uh, avoided if I, I receive the, the production from high pressure wells and two uh, more two uh, comp compression stages and go to exportation. Okay, all my gas, my my producer gas are exported. Um, to calculate some uh, the part of the the prime process, we have applied with heights uh, to calculate how is the the oil saturation physics. And we have some results from our first case. Um, we have some, um, I think we obtained uh, normal curves in terms of production from this field, in terms of oil production. It's the same curve dash here. That's the brown line. And we have the water production. Here we have the water liquid production. And here we have the water ejection production. Okay. Uh, in this case, it's a very high uh, reservoir very high uh, reserve pressure is 900 bars of very high and we operated is a, a, a lower it's a one study we, we try to define how is the best um, how is the best um, reservoir uh, pressure limit to operate this this field okay but I think for us is in terms of results is is very nice here I study I told for you we try to evaluate the minimum pressure in the reservoir um, and how it affects the liquid production for a gas and of course it's how it affects the oil production and we can verify uh, different um, curves in terms of uh, liquid production forecasts, depending of the, the, liquid, uh, the, the pressure I am operating this reserve. Okay. And what is interesting in this case is remember to maintain this kind of pressure and maintain a high liquid rate, it demands for me a high water injection. That is, is, is an interesting point to, to, to think about. Okay, I, I will show some uh, other result about it. But it's one, uh, I, and, and one idea how the integrated uh, evaluation can bring us this kind of uh, result. Here is other result when I we <coughs> compare oil production versus separation pressures. I told you the idea in terms of the pressure of the separators I am using. And the combination of the use of all separators or using just three separators, how is the percentage of uh, 
increment of oil in my case. Here we have some uh, certain uh, increment of fluid, but it's not so high. But to calculate this kind of result, we need to consider the integration with um, a more sophisticated uh, simulator. Hey, I want I want to bring this this picture for you to show because generally the reservoir simulators cannot um, cannot bring this information for for us. Here is an interesting result because if I consider. Uh, certain pressure uh, pressure from on on the from the wells in the platform for example I consider 25 bars for the wells um, here in this point okay the wells uh, came here with is the 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 pressure on the surface. And I evaluate the demand of compression I need. You can observe here, you have amount of compression for each, each stage. Okay? But if you increase this number, that number, you can do something interesting. Something interesting occurs. You reduce the compressibility. Uh, sorry, the comp uh, the compression demand, uh, uh, power demand. It's an interesting number for us. Uh, why? If I increase the number this number, and I will show again that picture. We can avoid part of the, the, the compression from the third stage. Or we can use uh, this compression, uh, we can avoid the uh, part of the energy I need to, to compress. So that's the idea. If I am operating my platform in a higher pressure, I can use less compression for my system. Okay. And it it has some some um, impact in my CO2 uh, emission. Okay, because this difference. We can, can bring me, okay, I I don't need all compression power I need. Okay, it is inter interesting in terms of recovery. Ah, sorry, in terms of the, the, the full demand to generate this amount of energy and the CO2 emission. Here is a same analysis, but considering that, that uh, pressure changes in my system. And again, I can change the, the, the pressure demand. Uh, sorry, my pressure, uh, my, my power demand. Or um, my, to produce this field. So the idea is, we can do something in the platform that allow us to Reduce the, the my, our power demand and just operating or just to define different set of um, processing parameters. Okay, that is interesting. Here, the same idea, but for a water pump. Um, in our case, we we just some evaluations considering three, four or five water injectors, okay? And depending on the number of wells, I have different um, injection pressure. 
and the, in the in the output uh, output of the pumps. Okay, because I have some questions related to pressure drop in the pipes, so I need different uh, uh, pressures for um, the outlet of pump. And again, it affects the power I need to pump um, water for water injection. Okay? It's, it's interesting. The change of the, 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 the injectors of my field change my, uh, my pump demand. It's an interesting detail. Sometimes you don't evaluate it, it correctly in terms of simulation. And again, if I increase my, my static pressure of the reservoir, I need higher pressures in terms of uh, the, in the output of the pump system. And I think it's my, the, the last uh, presentation here. If I uh, join two different effects, for example, the pressure in the surface, the pressure um, uh, from the wells reaching the platform, and the pressure of the reservoir, if I change this number, I change the power demanded for pumping the water, and I change the compression demand. But this difference in uh, a road estimation is for us in terms of dot uh, one ton of CO2 per day. Oh, so it's it's an interesting number. Okay, for us, just changing um, questions related to the pumps. Any compressor. Right. Okay, so how is the idea? Um, in this case, top side details could affect uh, uh, the operation of my system, could affect my production of CO2, the CO2 emission. Okay, so, but how is the idea now? Now we we'll select another field, it's a pre salt field B. Uh, and we um, do the same, but I think we can do the or break now. But the idea is, is to uh, deepen the tails from this problem, this kind of problem. Professor Bombard, I think you can do the break now. Anyone? Okay. No problem. Ten minute break or, or more? What do you need? For me, ten minutes is okay. Ten minutes, okay. So um, we'll be back on three thirty-six. Okay. Okay. See you. See you.
João? Yes, I think you can proceed your presentation because there are any there aren't any questions in the chat. Ah, okay, okay. Um, are you continue present on now the result field B? I think I have more results here. Maybe some results, some questions could be answered by these. Um, uh, uh, oh, there is one by Vinicius. <laughs> okay, okay, but I will <clears throat> go here. Uh, in this case, or case B, I use the same split model using uh, Excel VBA routines, are the same, but for this case, I included to calculate the production line model a transient simulator to be a bit more rigorous in terms of the calculation of pressure documents inside the, the pipes. Um, using the same, the well model with linear production index, thermodynamic model I use Pen Robson, and the energy and emission model, in this case I use Excel, but is uh, straightforward to, to connect with a calc, for example. I, I just to use the equations, simple equations, to calculate the pressure drop and then the power emission. So use inside Excel, but for in this case is it's very simple to connect because uh, I am using Excel. I could call Excel, uh, call inside Excel and so. It's the same. The reservoir the same. Just I uh, now I change the pressure because this this reservoir is have a lower pressure but means have a higher productive index from this study okay this is the, the transient simulator based on non-isothermal drift flux model this is a bit more sophisticated but the, the idea is used to represent this step the, this uh the the the, the the production column, the flow line arising from the flow. Um, the gas, gas treatment and compression, in this case, I use compressors um, uh, that use electrical motors to obtain your rotation. Okay, the, same, the, the previous case are the same, but the idea is how energy I need to compression and to pumping, I use a uh, gas turbine, okay? I don't have turbo compressors here. It's just to, to evaluate how is the total energy demand I need for this, plot, for this top side. Um, and my production plant is a bit different because in this case, I have just three separators. I'm not focusing this analysis, but I will analyze uh, the same idea. I, I could select if I change the pressure in the in the in the well in the in the wells. But I, I, in this case, I included a CO2 separation by uh, membrane filter when I can separate part of this the, the, the produced gas that is just CO2 I can separate in range acting the reserve okay so I what I want to evaluate first I want to evaluate the full exportation of the gas including CO2 or I include an evaluation separating CO2 to reinjecting the reservoir. Okay? In the same case, I'm not considering the, the miscibility of this gas. Okay? I just took, uh, I, for example, I, I could inject in the top of the reservoir just to storage the CO2 in this field. Okay? But I want to verify how is the impact in terms of power demanding of my platform. Okay, so 
Uh, and the power generation, I am using a uh, gas turbine connected by an uh, alternate current generator, okay, to generate uh, um, electricity to move the compressor and burn the pumps. So, and here I, I, I resume some uh, results. Just first, uh, uh, doing uh, the, the most basic, I saw for you, the most basic evaluation for a, a optimization study, for example, well, let's to define how is the platform leak to rate restriction. I am using, for example, uh, one, uh, one million thousand barrels per day in terms of liquid processing, or I'm using uh, 150 thousand barrels per day. For us, in terms of um, uh, reserve engineering, it's very common to, to apply this kind of study. We set these in the reserve simulators and verify, okay, my platform is, is, is full, in this case, is full, uh, is filled, fulfilled, okay. Uh, I am using seven wells to produce, so I can produce more than that. Uh, I have capacity, capacity to produce more than this limit, but the platform is my, my main restriction. And here, I, I, I always fit the same scale from the graphics, okay? I use, always compare the same, but for us, what is interesting, the recovery factor, of course, is different. Nice. I have lower production if I consider a lower platform. But in about in about CO2 emission. It's a good question. Okay, using the tool, the integrated tool, I did the calculation. I, for me, I, I obtained the expected behavior because for a lower um, platform and lower productions, I have lower uh, energy consumption is related to this, this axis and the CO2 emission is related to this axis, okay? It's different from both, uh, from both platforms. Okay, nice. This is, uh, I think that is okay and it is expected. But what um, call my attention in this term is the amount of time, the initial, especially the initial, I have a higher energy consumption. Okay? For me, it's an interesting detail. Even I have the, the platform, if uh, the same liquid production, but it's more related to water injection. Okay? And here I, I calculate the, the cumulative power demand in terms of terawatt hour and the, to, the, 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 the total CO2 emission. And it's just for give you a number. But I, I did some change in my model. I changed the number of wells. I just divide the, 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 the production and I obtain, if I change for some seven for five, for five producers, um, I have um, a bit difference in terms of recovery, okay? But for us in terms of production, in optimization, the capex of these wells have a great impact, okay? Because the uh, drilling, uh, the drilling costs in a uh, project is a high, uh, is a, have a high percentage in terms of the total capex. So if I need to be more rigorous, maybe the five producer option may be best for us, okay? But here it's just to, 
to do to to change for you to show for you when I change pro, uh, pro, uh, production strategy uh, components, we obtain differences in terms of uh, not only in terms of my forecast, but in terms of capex. Um, I don't have the, the 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 number here, but maybe uh, something. Mm. Uh, maybe sixty million dollars per well, I guess something like that. Okay, I will reduce my, I increase my net present in terms of a uh, hundred million dollars. I guess this is this is just a. A number okay um, and this is the the energy consumption and CO2 emission and it's basically the same okay it's a bit different that's basically the same for this study but here if you remember in the, the previous study in the previous case we changed the pressure that reaching the, the the platform okay on the the, the the pressure of the wells i did this analysis and obtained the same behavior in terms of same production injection from the fuels and in terms of co2 oh i obtained different results maybe uh, Ten percent. Oh, it's, it's, it's an interesting number. Uh, it's not only a static evaluation, but I have now the possibility to verify how is the energy consumed for a long time. Okay, for my my case. So that change I I I, I show I sh I showed for you in the previous case. Now I evaluate along the time. I said, oh, it, it is important for our case. Okay, and it's a more op, more op, it shows for us the changes in top side that could bring uh, to increase the efficiency of the platform. Okay, of course, it is need to be verified. It's possible to do in the platform because for old platforms it cannot be done. Okay, you need to verify it with. The the, the 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 company engineers to verify but it's possible to evaluate devaluate it um this is evaluation in terms of the pressure limit of the reservoir in this case i how i need to maintain a higher pressure i start to inject early compared to both but how I inject more, I recover a bit less than uh, the base case. But in terms of power, I need, I consume more pump power okay, to maintain a higher pressure in the reservoir. Um, here I apply the both platform separation pressure in changing the brush and the reservoir pressure limit. Um, it, it changes the start of injection. The results are quite similar. But in terms of uh, energy consumption and CO2 emission from this case, I need less compression power, but I need more pump power. Okay, it's just another evaluation can be possible to do. And, oh, the next one is nice. I, I, I try to do something different. I impose the CO2 restriction. I select 
uh, the best case, assuming uh, 60 kilogram and 60 kilogram per square centimeter in the plot in the, the wells, and I set in the in the integrate integration tool a limit to dot uh, five ton per day. Okay, this is what happened in my field. In terms of production. I lost a lot of production in terms of the, the beginning, okay? But in the final, I have the same, I have a, a normal recovery, I guess. But this is the point. Okay, I fixed the CO2 emissions. Of course, doing the questions related to the, the I have a, a power uh, a power available in the platform, so I need to pass this power from the compressor and the pumps. So what's the idea? This affects a lot my production uh, forecast. So uh, I don't. I don't see the government imposing this kind of uh, um, uh, restriction from oil, oil fields, okay? But um, I think if it becomes normal in the future, we need to work, we, maybe you need to change the way to, to, to develop this kind of field, okay? Because remember, to calculate this amount, I need to calculate how, uh, how, how many fuel I need. I need to calculate the power demand from the compression and the power in the mean from the pumping. And I need to verify how I, for uh, who I send the this energy to try to maximize my production. So that's a, a, a interesting point to discuss, I think, for the future. What you do, what, what you need to do in this kind of scenario. Okay? But that is the last one. But that's for our cases I showed for you. I not reinjected CO2, I just sent CO2, I exported CO2 with, uh, with fluids, uh, with the gas, to the, 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 uh, the onshore, from some uh, gas, gas unit treatment, uh, gas treatment unit, okay? And how, and, what, what did occur, occurs in this gas unit? I don't know. But okay, I'm sending the gas. Suppose I could remove this gas. I can remove in the platform. But I remove this gas from the platform, inside the platform, in, re in rejecting the well, in the, in the reservoir. Uh, so that's the idea. I have in this, in this uh, field, I have a molar fraction of 44% in gas producer. And I consider, I not consider miscibility. So I just to uh, inject in the top of the reserve. And what happens in terms of recovery? In this in scenario, do observe difference of um, the recovery factor because I am balancing this amount of CO2. I am rejected with the amount of water I, I I need. Okay, I'm just to do this balance. Uh, it may be a bit different this number here. So it's, a, it's a bit slow here because I have the curve of CO2. But consider the, the, the difference. 
And in terms of energy consumption and CO2 emission, I need to include a extra uh, compressor. Okay, if you remember in the beginning of here. In the all cases, I am just separating and send for exporting. But I can separate CO2 and reject in the reserve. And just avoid part of it, the, avoid the CO2 exportation. That is interesting in terms of the, the production unit is on the, on the shore. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, in this case, I don't, uh, I just fixed the, the pressure, the exportation. Maybe if I am uh, managing less gas, maybe I could change this pressure. But assuming the same pressure, and uh, we uh, consume the same amount of gas, I need to consider this extra compression stage. So, um, that is the result. I need more power. Okay. So um, it is, of course, this model cannot. Uh, this kind of reserve analytical model cannot to to get the benefit of consider the CO two rejection in terms of miscibility and uh, miscible flooding, but maybe you can consider the benefit of don't send CO2 to the, to the shore. Okay, that is one analysis that need to be uh, done in, in, in a, 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 a company uh, view, in an asset view. Okay, because I think that is better for the company to reject the CO2. Okay, but it's just an exercise to, to show for you how is the impact of energy consumption and so in the effects of uh, CO2 in in the production and consumption. This is the a final table in terms of. Uh, all cases sh uh, sh uh, shown. Um, it's interesting. I, I applied a similar uh, in, uh, index like Frode's uh, show about uh, that the Equinors have used it is the amount of uh, CO2 emitted by the the oil recovered. And this is an interesting number to, to, to give us ideas behind how is the best, how would, would be the best uh, option to operate this field. Okay? But it's just an exercise to show how to use the integration approach, how is the impact of CO2 uh, emissions in terms of recovery, in terms of uh, how it's affecting the, the top sides and so on. Um, I have just um, a, a, another part I want to talk about is CO2 under uncertainties. Uh, I think it is interesting to, to talk about because um, in the development of any oil field, uh, risk analysis involving uncertain, uncertainty boots is essential for decision making in the development of production system. Um, because you, what you verify in the companies is generally you have a short in the beginning of your studies, you have a short period of uh, history of your field. And when you extrapolate this, this data from models are uh, candidates for the 
from represent the behavior of this field, you generally observe um, distributions like these. Okay, you can have uh, uh, depend on the field, depend on the model, a lot of things, but you can have this kind of difference. Okay, in terms of the the cumulative production injection. Uh, of net present value and so on. Um, but the study of this kind of uh, problem that involves the uncertainty uh, analysis is a complex test, okay? Because you need to, to, to try to include all uncertainties in, uh, in a methodology to try to obtain uh, this kind of behavior, this kind of distribution of my uncertainty, the combination of my uncertainties. And generally, uh, the reservoir, if you consider the uncertainty attributes for reservoir, what do we have? Geological pro properties, petrophysical characteristics, fluid properties, contacts, well productivities, and others. Okay? Especially in the beginning of a field, generally you don't have a lot of these informations. Okay? And you are uh, verifying this kind of attribute along the production. From the production system, we have uh, already some uncertainty attributes related to the fluid property correlation that represent the fluid, multiphase flow correlation that represent the, the behavior of the fluids inside the pipes, relative rawness, and other known parameters. And we have also technical operational uncertainty attributes uh, related to the production inje injection efficient of the platform and the wells. And again, at the beginning of the field, I have a lot of uncertainty. We can, what we can generally do, we try to define some, some of these attributes in a specific methodology, trying to, to com combine and try to obtain the forecast from these, uh, the forecasts of these combinations, uh, assembling the risk curve of my project. And for CO2 under uncertainty, uh, I verify few studies, very few studies, considering impacts of uncertainty intervals, of integrate, integrating reserve or production system. Sorry, few studies considering impact of attributes, considering integration, and none explores risk analysis for energy demand and green. Uh, half green emissions in this scenario. Okay. Um, so, based on this situation, the evaluation of selection and insertion of these uncertain attributes can be important to verify the risks of a project and better scenario choices for better project viability and sustainability with adequate financial and production returns. That's the, 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 the appeal to consider an analysis for energy demands in, in on gas emissions. So, I will present a short, uh, a short case study uh, for you. It's a press of field, uni, uh, our benchmark Unisim 2D. For this study, I apply the decoupled model using our reserve simulation, our IMAX, included P2 multiphase flow simulator. The well model is inside the reserve simulator. And the energy and emission model, I uh, considered Excel to calculate the results. Again, use the, the calc. In this case, it's more straightforward than the, 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 the others. 
the, 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 the previous, except for the case I cannot to uh, uh, using the, the, the calc to affect the provision. Okay, I can use just the, the results generated by the reserve simulation. And this, the, I defined some uncertainty for reservoir, for uh, operation of my platform, and for my production system related to fluid model, pressure drop model, and robustness. And I combine, um, in terms of, I combine with reservoir model, reservoir and reservoir model uncertainty, reservoir and operation uncertainty, and the full uncertainties. I run all my, uh, my, my uncertainties here, okay, and obtain my risk curve. There's a lot of details. Um, I will should uh, include the petrophysical images, uh, basically 2,000, sorry, 200 petrophysical images, uncertainties in terms of relative permeability, PDT, bubble point, well index multiplier, operation, operation attributes, I have uh, efficiency for platform, well producer, and eh, producer injectors, for production system, I included equations, eh, sorry, equation, no, eh, models for pressure drop, for fluid, Basically, the, 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 the most known uh, equations applied for uh, simulators, okay? Um, and I built, to calculate the CO2 emission, a surface facility energy model, very similar that the COC. When I have a general set, constant power load for base production, a gas injection compression, um, a producer water injection pump, a seawater injection pump, both are complementary, I have a flare with constant flux, uh, uh, full rate, yeah, a gas export compressor, um, that uh, is, is a turbo compressor in this case. So, the results are very similar for in this for one case. I have a power demand along the time. I can fit the difference for base load production, gas injection, seawater injection pump, production water pump. Here is the fuel demand in terms of flare, gas export compressor, that is a turbo compressor here in the generator set. I think this is it's okay for uh, this kind of problem. But what is interesting here, when I try to evaluate the risk curves, when I combine the different uncertainties, I have some uncertainties, considering a different part set of uncertainties, reservoir, reservoir and operation, reservoir production system operator, and operation, and for net present value and uh, cumulative oil production, we have the, basically the same curves. But here, the history starts to, to be different because I, verify the impact of the production system uh, uncertainties for my model. Okay? In terms of uh, cumulative water injection production. Uh, for CO2 from the reservoir, because I am assuming I have some amount of CO2 in this, in this benchmark, 8% of molar fraction, Okay, it is related from the, the, the fluid inside the reservoir. I think are this, we need to obtain the same curves. 
But this is interesting. In terms of energy demand and CO2 emission, I have this kind of risk curve. How is the idea? This reference is the base case I can assume for my case. That is the, the generally the case that the, the, the industry evaluates. Oh, this is my case to take decision. Okay. But if I consider all the risks related to uh, zero risk, uh, risk, uh, uncertainties, production systems, efficiencies, I have some distribu different distribution of uh, energy consumption and CO2 emission. And I think the companies need to be start to verify this kind of results not only bring the risk curve for production injection and net present value but also include the co2 risk curves assume you have the same platform okay that is not be the reality i could i could be uncertainties in terms of the efficiency of the process okay um, and this analysis could uh, also affect the, the production restricted by CO2, okay? But here, a, a risk um, a view. I think it is my contribution for today, my last... Uh, my last uh, presentation, my last slide. I return for stop sharing. And I, I think I have a lot of questions. <laughs> you yes, uh, you had some uh, a few questions. We can take. Uh, I don't know how we we are regarding time. Uh, I, I think we are ahead, right? Yes, I think I, uh, I have um, a lot of time to answer. Now, for, for uh, this, uh, the clock here in the computer is. <laughs> Is not uh, is not right. It's part uh, seventeen, but much. What is late here? <laughs> uh, what time is it now, Dennis? Part seventeen. Part seventeen. Okay. So I think uh, I think it's uh, it's leaving the, the the schedule that we planned. So I know we have uh, some questions. Uh, one by Vinicius regarding this uh, late later example. How was the base case defined in slide twenty seven uh, seventy two? Right? Okay, seventy seven. Let's say we return from the presentation. Just a moment. Yeah. Um, Third uh, screen. Seven, seven. Yeah, I think it's this one. You are think about this reference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What I. What I have, I select because I have a lot of reservoir, uh, a lot of uncert uh, uncertainty attributes. Okay, I select one of uh, one of these one level of each uncertain attribute. In the case, I think that is the zero level. Okay. Mm -hmm. From reservoir for operation and for production system, I select one of these uh, one of these 
uh, parameter and define as the base case. Okay, <laughs> is the reference. So what is the the, the idea? It's compare this selection with the combination of all these parameters. So uh, taking different labels for different parameters. Okay. There was another, there is another question by Vinicius. Vinicius, you can take the mic and talk about your question. Yeah, sure. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor. And Juan, thank you again for your presentation. Let me... You're welcome. Very interesting uh, study cases. So I'd love to see that uh, Unicalc. I have two questions. Actually, I have more. Just just to follow up on this last one. So the you're calling reference. It's a, a case that you created using the P50 for all uncertainty attributes. Is that it? Yes. Ah, OK. Uh, it's not actually the reference that you, you guys have worked with that is refined case. Uh. Yeah, the first one is the reference case. Uh, this one is um, the first case is the field A is um, Jonathan's been study in your master degree. And but he don't con could continue the, the study wait for uh, lessons about power and CO two emission. Mm -hmm. So the is to reply this the study. Consider now, because here the, the it's uh, almost such the question about CO two emission. Okay, I think if if they could continue they could and. Um, go ahead in these studies. But I replied this problem in terms of a new pre-solved field, change some parameters, and I could calculate uh, questions related to CO2 emission and energy consumption and so on. Okay. Again, it's straightforward to use a calc to, to, to consider this problem. I don't think that is a problem to no, great, thanks. Uh, the other one is in the exercise, in the example number one. You showed a, a table that was summarized in different scenarios uh, regarding the number of injectors. I did not quite get uh, the meaning of the, the column on uh, energy demand. I, I think it's the, I think the one of the last slides from case one. Last slides, sorry. Yeah, but from, from case one as well. Ah, sorry, sorry, example, sorry. Yeah. If you could sorry. just... Uh... Yeah, go here. back to a table. There is a table. Some... Ah, yeah, that, that one. Could you explain a bit better? Uh, or Because I, I lost uh, a part okay. of the explanation. Um, to supply the, 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 the amount of water in in the reservoir and maintain the pressure, we can uh, the that still select a different number of injector wells. Okay, three, four, or five. Uh, but this this difference, the, the the difference of these numbers, affect the pressure drop. Uh, of the pipelines that are used to inject water from the platform to reserve. Okay? You have a difference. Because I have amount of water I need to inject to, to maintain the pressure in the reserve. If I uh, select a different number of wells, I have different rates inside the, the pipes and it, it is affected by the, the friction inside the the these pipes. So I can distribute the, 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 the amount of water in the wells. I reduce my friction in the pipe so I need less pressure in the and the output of the, the pump. That's the first point. Okay. 
And this last demand affects my power to, to pump this amount of water. Because they're basically the same. Okay? But the pressure I need to, to, to put in the, in the water injection pipes depends on the number of the depends on the rate I am imposing on the well that is related from the total the, 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 the amount of water I need to inject in the reservoir divided by the number of wells. That's the idea behind this this table. Can you got uh, the idea you get the idea? Yeah, I understand. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. So you're assuming the same volume or rate? Yes. Yes. And then you're dividing I, into more wells. Yes. Thank you very much. Now it's oh, yeah. I got it. Thanks. It it is an interesting detail because when we are uh, evaluating studies uh, uh, with uh, water injection, generally we forget it generally because we assume that we have pump capacity to inject water in in, in a field okay we generally assume that we have a pump that is capacity to, to inject but generally don't ev evaluate the question of the number of injectors is one detail if i increase the numbers i need less pressure in the in the in the pump in the other detail if i need to increase the pressure in the uh, in the reservoir if i maintain pressure especially for pressal fields i need to increase the pump pressure One more question. It seems that we have a question by Davi Eber. Davi, can you please uh, turn on your mic and, and uh, put your question directly? Davi? OK, otherwise, the, his question is, thank you for the great lecture, Joao. For the uh, ROP case, uh, the increase in CO2 emission is related to parameters from production system uncertainty, right? Could you explain a bit about these parameters? Do they increase gas phase volume? Uh, the, his mic is not working. That's why uh, I, I write the question. Mm. Okay. Um, in the um, in the case of uh, Oh, um, David, the uh, uh, RPO case, just, just explain, please. Uh, I, I didn't get, I didn't got, didn't get the, this case. Ah, okay. Um, okay, 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 thank you. Um, how is the problem in terms of, I think that is interesting to show again. <laughs> Just a moment. I have this kind of parameters, okay? Um, when I included the, the P parameter, the production parameter, what I observe I have an increase of net present of. Uh, Sorry, João, we can. Are you sharing? 
Yes. We can see. Oh, sorry, it. sorry, sorry. Now I'm sure. Sorry. Are you are you seeing my presentation? Okay. Yes? yes. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, cumulative production, in terms of risk curve, I think the same. But what I observe, I observe an increasing of uh, injection. Okay, in terms of my reserve, I need to inject more when I include this. The, the uncertainties of production system. I observe more uh, uh, water production in terms of uh, in our case. And if you verify here, I have a change in terms of production. Okay. Even I'm producing more, uh, in this case, I need to pump more water. Okay. Um, uh, is this? I have a decrease in terms of my demand of energy and CO2 emissions. Okay. I have a compensation uh, in terms of uh, the compression of my system. This case is a bit different from the, the previous, the, the, the two previous. But even I demand more, more ingestion, I need, in this case, I need less energy to Terms of less energy, and so I need to less CO2 emission. Okay, there's a compensation. So, okay. Uh, very interesting results. Uh, I was wondering about what led to this increase. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. We can discuss it more in the last, in the next week about what is happening. But... Important point, when you integrate, when you including the production system, in your results, you affect the production of your system. Okay? Um, you can obtain different results when you change production system parameters. For example, if you change the fluid correlation, we, um, as Professor Marcelo, uh, Professor Babi showed in the previous lectures we have, if you change these parameters, you change the pressure drop inside the pipes, and it affects the behavior of the reservoir. It is an interesting uh, uh, detail of why you need to integrate. Uh, in this uh, first case I showed for you, don't matter the correlation I'm using, because it affects I feel my, 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 my integrated system, but if I include in there a, 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 a good model for reservoir and I change aspects related to the production system, um, we verify differences in terms of production, oil production, water production. So it's a detail uh, that you need to to take account when you integrated models and like to evaluate uh, forecastings, uh, even for water, gas, or even for CO2 emissions. Okay, it's, uh, it's important. So, depending on the case we're studying, 
maybe this kind of tool I present and not be enough to, to take some evaluations. Okay, you need to, to use more uh, sophisticated solutions. Okay, uh, we don't have any other questions. Um, I think we can finish your uh, officially your lecture here and the short course. However, uh, I would like to talk uh, about, yes, thank you very much, Joan, for your welcome. And uh, your very clear explanations. So uh, it's, I think, for every everyone was a very uh, important learning that we how we had today and yesterday with you and Ruth. So thank you, John, very much. <clears throat> uh, I'd like you, uh, you all, to stay few minutes to talk about next week activity. So uh, I am here with uh, Denis and uh, Joan, uh, Marcelo and Valdir. Uh, uh, they, are, they are not here, but they are also uh, in the course, the postgraduate course with us. Uh, so we, we would like to talk a little bit with you uh, regarding the the, um, the uh, project that uh, we are proposing to you uh, to elaborate uh, on a project uh, for those uh, who want a certificate of participation in the short course. So the idea is to propose some uh, challenge to you. Uh, uh, for you to elaborate this challenge uh, next week in the 20, uh, 23rd uh, of November, the, the next Thursday morning, 8 a.m. During the day, you prepare a, a study on this challenge that we will propose. And then uh, you deliver, uh, you, you prepare a, a, a report on that. It's going to be a, a report uh, on PowerPoint showing your study methodology and results and comments using a calc, which was, and the concepts, of course, the concept that were uh, presented by uh, Joao and Fro. But it's important to use a calc as a computational tool for evaluating uh, emissions. And that's the idea of the, the project would be uh, <clears throat> For you to exercise the ideas, the concepts, and the, the tool, and to return a uh, report to us. And in exchange of that, <laughs> uh, uh, you would uh, be entitled to uh, the certificate of uh, participation in the mini course, in the short course. Joao, uh, well, uh, can you? Uh, yes, Dennis is uh, saying that uh, you are not uh, all here uh, in this session. We can, of course, we can send you by email, we can send uh, by email the instructions for this uh, report, for this uh, project, right? The idea is to propose uh, we would propose to you uh, um, a challenge. For example, we propose, we, we give, give uh, a certain production profile 
a long time, the production, a long time for several years, okay? And you uh, analyze the associated emissions for uh, a certain uh, target, uh, could be maximize, uh, uh, minimize uh, emissions, you know, um, could be, uh, you could define a target in terms of figure of merit to analyze with, for a given production profile. Um, we would propose the, this uh, for you to elaborate from uh, in the next days until Thursday, uh, uh, next Thursday, 23rd of November. So uh, let me see here, what do you think about this? Can you, uh, are you interested in participating in this uh, project? Uh, yes, Isabella, you are going to have access to these slides. Uh, we can, uh, you have also both these slides from Joao and from Probe, I think, uh, Vinicius, can can uh, can we uh, make available these slides? Yes, say what? Yes. So uh, the idea is uh, to propose this challenge to you. You can elaborate on this during the next few days until Thursday. Uh, Thursday, and on Thursday morning we'll get we'll be here to uh, uh, to follow you, to supervise you on the preparation of the report. It okay? can be done by, by pairs uh, of students or participants. So it can be done by up to two people working together. Or if you want, you can, of course, you can uh, work alone. Um, no problem. Uh, the important thing is to deliver the report uh, uh, um, until uh, next Thursday, uh, end of day, uh, 5, 5 p.m. And uh, we will send you the instructions for this challenge that will be consider your uh, project uh, of the of the for, for this uh, short course a way for us to evaluate your assessment you have to assess your learning uh, uh, of the concepts presented in the in the short course Okay. No questions, no comments. Uh, will the recording be shared before the challenge? Uh, uh, I think so, yes. It will be, uh, we'll just cut, you know, you, you have to, to make some additions in that because there are some breaks that were, uh, we have to cut off those breaks. Uh, just a little addition, and then you uh, will, yeah, it will make a, will be available for you too. Okay. So in the next few days, you will receive uh, instructions, detailed instructions for the final project. Uh, no more questions. Juan, can you talk a little bit about the, the kind of uh, challenge that you were going to propose? Yes. Thank you, Professor. Um, in the audience, we have two different uh, participants. One is the students that are following a regular uh, 
um, class in, inside UNICAP, in UNICAP, okay? From these students, we will ask to continue your challenges and bring as the final challenge the integrated uh, uh, study, including reservoir, including uh, the multi-phase flow for pipes, including um, compressors or pumps, all you have uh, evaluated and bring a, a whole problem. Uh, in the, in the, it can be similar that I'm shown for you. Dif uh, some study related for uh, an integrated approach considering CO2 emissions, okay, to calculate in energy and CO2 emissions, okay? It can be similar I'm show or you can verify other topics do you want, okay? Um, if you want, you can use a calc to do the, 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 cal the, the, the calculation in terms of um, topside energy and CO2 emission, okay? It's, it's, you are free to use, um, just to, for us, just uh, give us uh, how is the details about how you included the compressor data, the pump data inside the, the, the cock that, that is a uh, need to, to complete the exercise. Or if you want to implement a compressor or pump equations in your models, uh, it's fine for us, okay? From the, uh, the other people that attend this workshop, that uh, just to follow these two days, the idea is, as Professor Bombard said, to explore um, uh, a calc example. Okay, try to minimize the, the energy demand, try to minimize the um, CO2 emissions, um, and we, uh, ha as uh, you don't have uh, time to build an integrated model, we will um, uh, give for for you um, some previous data to be used in a calc, okay? Especially um, the the production profile, uh, pump tables, uh, compressor data, um, and you can explore. The calc try to minimize uh, the emissions. You can change something in the platform in, in, in a calc uh, model. Um, try to obtain the uh, a better the best solution for for the case. Okay. Um, what is important for you is uh, try to install a calc in your uh, compute, personal computers, okay? It's important to install uh, Python first, and it's straightforward to install uh, a calc in, in, in your computer, but uh, you, it's just to follow the, the instructions in the, in the, in the web page. But what is important, install the last uh, version of, Py uh, of um, Python because to avoid some problems in terms of compat compatibility of libraries, okay? And you, you can do some uh, evaluations with the ECOLC models available in, in the web page from the software and we uh, in the next days we will send for you um, 
a preliminary uh, ECOP file to D1, and you will be uh, working inside. Okay, you can ch change and so. And as Professor Bohart said, uh, who has interest in, in, uh, in participate of this uh, okay. little challenge that's here? Because the students don't have a chance to, the, the students need to participate for the full challenge. But from the, the others, uh, participants of the workshop, if you have an interesting, let us, uh, let us know. Okay. To, I think you can send a mail for send a mail for for everyone. Right, Professor Bonhart. And if if, yes. want, if they have interest in the, they can answer for us. I think that is the best option. I think in the uh, Thursday. As soon as we, we will send the mail for uh, for you. On the, the, the students, okay, explain better these details and send more information. Okay, okay, so, uh, uh, thank you very much again for you all, uh, Joan, Vinicius, Denis, Marcelo, Epic, Steen, uh, Surani. Thank you very much for your support. And for you all, uh, students and uh, participants, for being here with us uh, with uh, very important, very interesting questions that uh, certainly we will use to improve our next uh, versions of this course. Thank you very much. So, see you uh, next week on Thursday morning. We will be here uh, waiting for you. Okay? Virtually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye.